This video discusses Ilford Delta 3200 professional film and looks at how to use it, the film's characteristics, technical details, and sample images. Delta 3200 is an ultra-fast film available in 35mm and 120 only. First and most importantly, Ilford rates Delta 3200 at a nominal 3200 ISO, which is 36 DIN. I did not at all like the look of, that this film returned at 3200 ISO in most cases, and I found the negatives using Ilford's recommended developing chemistries and times too thin at 3200 ISO for my tastes. I liked using this film at 1250 to 1600 ISO primarily and also received good results as slow as 400 ISO. With 1250 to 1600 ISO shooting, I would develop it at a 3200 ISO time, and that returned results that I liked. And what I mean by that I liked, they had better negative density, better image quality, better contrast, and better tonal range. So if you use this film and you find that the negatives you're getting come back thin, or the contrast is lacking, the digital scans have spots, or in general the images just look kind of mushy and soft, those are some of the primary complaints about 3200. Try pulling it one to one and a third stops when you're shooting it, when you dial in the sensitivity, and then develop it normally for a 3200 ISO developing time. You'll probably find your results improve. A related tip on this point, I have a process here that's going to help you anytime you struggle with a film's results. So grab a 35 millimeter roll of that film, and you're gonna grab a camera with a fast maximum shutter speed as fast as possible. You're going to take a series of indoor and outdoor photos and you're going to keep your aperture set to a fixed setting if you can and you're going to adjust the camera's iso and shutter speed or set the camera to aperture priority mode and you're going to scroll the iso setting in the case of delta 3200 from 200 320 400 640 800 1250 1600 2500 and 3200 if you're using a slower film, like a 200, you would just start much slower and then maybe go up to a stop beyond 200 if you felt like it. At any rate, the exact ISO settings will vary by film. With Delta 3200, I stopped at 3200 because when I did this test, I already knew I was not liking the results at 3200. So when you develop your film, the negatives will then go from hyper dense to much thinner. What you wanna do then is look at your negatives and your scans, or if you're making contact sheets and prints, contact sheets will help a lot here as well. And you wanna see what looks good to you with the chemistry, the water, and the scanning process that you use to develop your film. And then you're just gonna use that sensitivity. That's how I arrived at 1250 for my own work. As a preferred format, here's a hot take you're not likely to ever hear from me again, I liked 35 millimeter more than 120. That's not typical for me and the film's grain really shows up in 35 millimeter. But if you embrace the grain, which you should because there's no way around it, then shooting 35 millimeter in a modern high-end camera like an Alpha 9, F4 or F5, EOS 1 and so forth, you're gonna find that this film really shines with fast shutter speeds well above the capabilities of any medium format camera shutter speeds. When using this film in 120, you're either going to shoot it indoors or you'll be outside right after sunset or right before sunrise or you'll be pulling it substantially due to the slower maximum shutter speeds of medium format cameras. Or you could use it in a pinhole camera, which is also a viable use too, and you'll have relatively fast shutter times by pinhole camera standards. Or you can use a very dark ND filter. Regardless, I like this film in 120 and I found my results from it very good, especially pulled some stops. I just happened to like 35 millimeter more. If you want to get the most out of this film, in addition to pulling it and developing normally, use it in even lighting or embrace the relatively high contrast it provides when you uh, are finding a developer and sensitivity combination that really works for you. A quick note on even lighting, by the way, this does not mean fog or overcast skies when you're outside. Those are conditions which did not bring out what this film can do for me. For subjects to use with this film, it's best for portraits, for some good technical reasons that we're going to explore in the spectral sensitivity section. This is a film that will work well in a controlled indoor portrait studio. 
Fast moving subjects in full daylight are also a good use. One of my favorite shoots from this film was at a rodeo, and this was a great film for that shoot. In the rodeo shoot, by the way, all of the rodeo photos were taken with the Alpha 9, set in shutter priority mode at 1 12,000th of a second, overexposing the film by a third of a stop. So uh, that should really give you an idea of how much, uh, of how fast moving that rodeo, some of those rodeo shots were. Indoor sports as well will work for this film. It could also work for weddings, which are generally a lower lighting than if they're indoors, but that's really only if your wedding client wants to have shots that have a reportage look. Also in general, this is a good portrait film if you have proper lighting control going back to the studio setting statement. I would not use this for outdoor portraits in full sun because of the contrast that this film will give you if it is exposed and developed properly. A quick note about these subjective characteristics and my take on them versus what you're going to read online, where they agree and where they don't agree. The characteristics that I rate in this section for Delta 3200 are going to vary greatly based on how you use this film. Underexposed images or overdeveloped negatives will have muddy and low contrast, soft acuteness, and poor detail retention. Overall, those factors are part of why this film is divisive and generally there are people who like it or don't like it. There aren't many people, uh, that many people, I know of one, who are fairly indifferent to this film. Some people hate this film because of the muddy look and are very outspoken about it. And I think that many of the people who don't like the way this film looks because of the look likely did not level set themselves for what this film can do and how it should be used. Shot at slower than box speed with good developing practices, this film can yield good contrast and image quality. It is not Delta 100. It is not Delta 400. But it can work for some uses, and it is its own film and needs to be treated that way. As for grain... It is as subtle as a cannonball dive in a kiddie pool. On 35mm, this film's grain will be your image's dominant feature. It will stand out no matter what you do. Even on 120, this film has strong grain, the one exception to that being when I shot it at 400 ISO and developed it in Legacy Pro 110, which is HC 110, at Dilution B, which is 1 plus 31. Personally, I did like the grain on the 120 a little bit more than the 35mm because it's less of a dominant feature in the images, and I felt that the grain on the larger negative did a good job of complementing the overall image look. So, if you like your film images to look like a super smooth digital image, Delta 3200 is not for you. The grain will give your photos a gritty, visceral look that is not suited for every situation and subject. All that said, I found that pulling this film did reduce the grain as noted, and that's as a general rule regardless of to what ISO or sensitivity you are pulling this film. So if you want less grain, try shooting this at 800 ISO or slower. For tonality and tonal range, it varies significantly by developer, exposure sensitivity, and your own developing and exposure skill. Done poorly, tonality and tonal range will be mushy and soft and not good. On the other end of the spectrum, the contrast can be pretty uh, domineering as well. For acuteness, though grain is high, acuteness is rather soft. Now that said, as we've heard many times in this section, acuteness varies by developer more than any other film I've reviewed in this series to date. So developers that bring out the grain like Rodinol and Ultrafin will likely give you a higher acuteness. Not always the case, but likely. I did find that uh, Legacy Pro L110 did give me very nice acuteness as well as good contrast. So as we'll hear later in this video, that's a de developer chemistry I strongly recommend for this film. For contrast, again, it is totally exposure sensitivity and developer dependent. When at its best, contrast is okay. When the film is underexposed, contrast is poor and muddy to the point of detail loss occurring. When the film's overexposed or overdeveloped, 
contrast is pretty strong and goes beyond the point where it's okay in the other direction. As I think that the sample images in this video show, many of my images lacked contrast and also a number of them had very high contrast. I was all over the board with this stock. It was not one that I really mastered and I'm okay admitting that. For sharpness, I recall reading that at a contrast of 1 to 1000, Ilford rated Delta 3200 at 100 line pairs per millimeter, which is the same as HP 5 Plus. Personally, I am skeptical that this is as sharp as HP 5 Plus. That said, it does record good details and with a sharp lens, it can yield sharp images, so I could very easily be wrong on that. Suffice to say, Delta 3200 is sharp enough to handle any lens you use in front of it and provide format appropriate enlargement. For your dynamic range, it is again, totally developer, developer concentration, developer temperature, and developer time dependent. As with all films, longer developing yields higher contrast until the film becomes overdeveloped and thick. So for Delta 3200, if multiple suggested development times exist, try erring on the side of longer development and seeing how that looks to you. For digital conversion, Delta 3200 converts to digital easily with a DSLR or scanner. The DSLR method I always advocate for allows much greater control of image contrast in post. No digitization can recoup an image that's muddy due to underexposure or overdevelopment, but a lot can be done with Delta 3200 negatives that are properly exposed and developed. The spectral sensitivity curve is used to describe the film's relative sensitivity on the y-axis to the visible light colors which are presented on the x-axis. So here's the spectral sensitivity curve, and you can see that there is a very, very good and wide range of spectral sensitivity with Delta 3200. If you've seen other videos in this series, you might also have realized that's a pretty flat spectral sensitivity curve. Now, when we overlay the spectral rainbow in here, you can see that in general, all of the tones from dark blue up through a pretty deep red have the same relative tonal density on the finished negative. That's part of why this film looks like it's muddy. A lot of people think this film looks muddy and they're not wrong. Like I'm not gonna disagree with them because I felt a lot of my images looked really muddy as well. And this is a big part of why. It's because the difference in tonal range, or I should say the difference in negative density between the primary visible spectra of light here, which are gonna be around 400 to 650, that's where the film does its best work there's not a lot of difference in the spectral sensitivity curve. So if a spectral sensitivity curve is flat, everything's gonna be pretty well gray. But you can, and the flatter that a spectral sensitivity curve is, the more generally gray a scene is going to look in the negative. So to that end, filters do tend to help this film. And what a tie in that is. Let's jump right into filter performance. So for this section, you're going to see two sets of identical images shot with no filter than red, orange, yellow, green, blue, tobacco, pink, and purple. And yes, the last three are designed for color films, but we all know that someone would ask why I left them out if I didn't include them. I found that red did a lot of good for this film by darkening the skies and bringing out some of the shadow detail. The orange and yellow filters had a similar and accordingly reduced effect. Now, much of that may be due to my specific scene, so your results may vary, but I would suggest if you want to improve your results with Delta 3200, try putting a warm tone filter on the front of your lens as a first step. Also, I found that green and blue turned this film into a disgusting and muddy mess. Green was by far and away the worst. Tobacco, pink, and purple didn't really do anything at all. Personally, I really liked how the orange filter performed on this stock. That would be my recommended filter to start with. Note that some cameras will underexpose Delta 3200 by up to one and a half stops with deep red and deep orange filters. So before you start going crazy using red and orange filters, you're gonna to wanna to do a test roll to see how your results come back with Delta 3200 and your filter. Reciprocity failure, as is generally the case with Ilford Films, 
needs to be done at shutter speeds faster than one ten thousandth of a second and slower than a full second. Ilford provides the reciprocity calculation equation for delta 3200 and it's included in the graphic you see here. For those handful of us with the Alpha 9, if you use the one twelve thousandth of a second shutter speed, add a third stop to your aperture. I did this when I shot this film with the Alpha 9 at shutter priority at one twelve thousandth of a second and the results came back very good. Well, the images not, might not be very good, but the negatives were very good. Anyway, if you're in a setting that allows for long exposures, like a shaded waterfall at dusk, then the way to use the exposure chart is to obtain a meter reading. So let's assume that your meter reading is 10 seconds. Follow the line on the bottom to 10 and then go up the 10 line to the bold angled line. Then follow the horizontal line left and you'll see your actual exposure, which in this case would be 20 seconds. So let's assume you have a metered 40 second exposure. Take a second and find that actual exposure time on the bottom line. Now trace that back to figure out your actual exposure time. I'll give you a second to do that. If you got back to 137 seconds as your actual exposure time, then you read this chart correctly. If you didn't, double check and see where you went wrong. Development compensation is not indicated for Delta 3200 with long exposures, at least not according to the data sheet. Ilford's data sheet indicates that Delta 3200 can be used and return good results from 400 to 6400 ISO with a recommended range of 1600 to 6400. The data sheet also provides information on how to expose and develop at 12,500 and 25,000 ISO. The massive development chart range goes from 25 to 12,500 ISO. As a note, the 25 ISO data point exists for exactly one developer, which is Acurol, never said this out loud, which is Acurol N. And that data point looks like an error based on the same sources time for other developing times with Acurol N. Personally, I found this film worked best from 800 to 1250 ISO. I did not particularly like it above 1600 and I shot it from 400 to 6400. None of the 6400 ISO images made it into this video because they were useless and trash. Over the five, maybe six years that I've used this film off and on, I developed it in 17 developer concentration ISO combinations. That's a hair less than usual for the videos in this series, but that's mostly because I got hung up on HC 110, which really delivered great results with this film. For HC 110, I use Legacy Pro L110 at Dilution B, which is 1 plus 31. And that ended up being my favorite and go-to developer by far for Delta 3200. Legacy Pro Mic X, which is their Microdoll X clone, also worked very well at stock concentration. D76 stock when I pulled the film to 800 ISO was my third favorite combination and it returned good results with good detail, sharpness, and contrast. And lastly, an honorable mention, though you'll probably never have to worry about actually getting to use this, Polydoll stock was a surprisingly good performer. In that vein, and due to the general performance similarities, X-Tall stock would probably also work well, but I didn't have a chance to try it with Delta 3200. Boy, there are three developers that I really would tell you to shy away from. D76 stock at 3200 ISO was a poor performer that yielded thin negatives. Now that said, at 800 ISO, I really like D76 stock a lot. Ultrafin Plus at 1 plus 4 was a developer I did not like with this film at all. I found the results to be muddy with extra high grain. It was just did not bring out the best in this film. And the last one that I would not use again is Rodinol at 1 plus 100 for stand developing. I found the results in that case to be very high in grain and very low in contrast. Delta 3200 is a divisive film that people either love or hate. I never found a single review or forum post by anyone who said that this was their favorite or go-to film. Personally, I am solidly indifferent to Delta 3200. If I never shoot Delta 3200 again, my life 
won't suffer. And I did really want to like this film because I really like the other Delta films with Delta 100 being a top five black and white film for me. But Delta 3200 isn't Delta 100, and expecting it to be is unfair to both films and yourself. Delta 3200 is like a wild horse with a bit in its teeth for the first time. It's not easy to ride, and it's harder to really get a good handle on it. The film needs patience and practice, both in hefty doses, if you set about to really make the most of it. If I'm honest, I don't think that I made the most of it. I've often wondered how I would feel about this film had I tried developing it in Perceptol, Ilfotech, F76, or some of the other commonly used and recommended developers that don't make it into my darkroom often or at all. I also wonder if maybe I would love this film were I a studio portrait photographer. One other thing, while we're wishing for stuff that doesn't exist or isn't, I would have liked to have had tried this in sheet film. Even if I had to order it at the annual Ilford Ultra Large Format ordering event only, I think this would be fun to shoot in low light on 4x5. Pulled to 400 or 800 ISO, this, as a sheet film, could be an awesome portrait stock. And to that point, I think that this film's best use would be portraits. The relatively flat spectral sensitivity line would lend itself well to creating portraits that are flattering while also reflecting a person's actual skin tone. So maybe this is the takeaway from this video. Delta 3200 is for shooters who are not me. Delta 3200 seems like a film that would be much more at home with a photographer who uses controlled light in a studio portrait setting versus use in the outdoors. So just bear that in mind, and if you do use the stock, go find some people to photograph. When we love something, it has an effect on our lives. The same is true when we hate something. Both ends of that spectrum represent an emotion that can in some way, shape, or form control our thoughts and actions. Ultimately, I think that the most damning thing anyone can say about anything is that they are indifferent to it. Because that means that its existence has absolutely no sway on our opinions or our lives one way or the other.